number three, the first video of it. Uh, it's really an interesting chapter here, was it not? What we see here is the Lord Jesus Christ returns from the Jordan. This is right after his baptism. And we see uh, that Jesus is full of the Spirit. We've been sort of paying attention to the phrase and what's been happening with the Spirit. Jesus is full of the Spirit. Then we see that he is led by the Spirit. And there's some interesting things here because quite often people think, well, if you're full of the Spirit, then everything will be fine in your life. You'll have no problems. <laughs> Jesus was full of the Spirit, and yet the Spirit led him where? Into the wilderness and led him into the wilderness for a time of temptation. He was there for 40 days um, where he fasted. 40 days. We don't know if he fasted totally of food and totally of water. Uh, the fasting of food, we can understand that in the natural somewhat. Fasting of water, you say, well, how could that happen? Well, it could be miraculous. Well, at the end of that time, we have these three temptations that you study this week. Some people think that Jesus was tempted the entire 40-day period, and he very well may have been. And then he was tempted these three last time. Either way you go, we have three of the temptations. And the first one is, he was tempted by the enemy. The enemy appeared to him in some form or fashion. It doesn't say whether it was bodily or not. It might have been just that voice speaking to him but tempted him to turn the stone to bread because it said at the end of the 40 days, Jesus became hungry. I think that gives us some insights into some things. Well, the Lord responded to him, and you read the passages in Matthew and Deuteronomy that the Lord quoted, that we live by the word of God, and God's word doesn't return empty. It wasn't that Jesus didn't have the power to do this. He could have done it, but the Father had not led him to do it, so he resisted meeting his own needs and his own power in his own abilities that he was granted. And there's a picture there for us to do likewise. The next temptation was the temptation of the worship of the devil. The devil took him up to a high place is the way it's described in Luke. When you look at the cross references in Matthew and Mark, you find out one of them says to a mountain. Regardless of what it is, there's really no mountain that, that you can be on the earth to see all the kingdoms of the earth. So these are likely visions when he takes him to the mountain and takes him to the top of the temple. Not actually taking him there, but taking him where he can see these things. And the enemy simply wants Jesus to worship him. That's the bottom line. He says, I'll grant unto you all these um, dominions. So the temptation is for Jesus to have all the dominions of the world. He has all the dominions of the world, but he hasn't taken them yet. That's going to come. But the temptation was to run the clock up ahead of time. People ask, did Satan have the authority to do this? He did. And the reason is that man abdicated this. In class, it was really interesting. I asked uh, you know, who gave Satan the authority and gave him these dominions. And people say, well, uh, God gave it to him, this and that. Well, no, God gave dominion to man in the Garden of Eden. And then Adam and Eve abdicated that when they broke the one rule that God gave them. Uh, the next temptation was the temptation literally to test God and to throw himself off of, uh, throw self off, off, got it backwards, sir, off of the temple uh, pinnacle. This right here was to test what the word of God. Did God really mean it when he said that he would protect Jesus? Satan was getting slick here, okay? He started quoting the scripture. Every time he said something and tempted Jesus, Jesus came back with him with the word of God. Well, Satan comes back with the word of God. At the end of it, we see that the devil left until a more opportune time. <clears throat> now, here's the truth that we learn about the enemy in, in this passage and in the cross reference, <clears throat> that the devil is the evil one. He's the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. He's the great red dragon, the serpent of old. You see that on Revelation. He is Satan. He's the deceiver of the world. He's a murderer. He's a liar and father of lies. The Lord gave us the model for resistant temptation, and that is to rest and trust and know the word of God. Do you know it? I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.